G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're trying to isolate the difference between a wheel bearing noise and a final drive noise in a front wheel drive vehicle. Let's have a look at it. One of the major issues that we have when trying to isolate sound or noises in a vehicle is that sound travels along a shaft. In particular today, I'm trying to isolate the noise that may be coming from a wheel bearing or it may be coming from the final drive. But unfortunately, there's a shaft that travels along between the two. It's called the drive shaft. Now just imagine sound travels from this side of the shaft right along to that side of the shaft. So it sounds like it could be from anywhere. So how do I isolate it? So let's take this vehicle for a spin out in the road so that you can hear the noise that I hear. First things first, seatbelts on. And you guys as well. Feel safe? Good, let's go for a road test. So we're listening for a progressive noise that gets louder and louder and louder as we drive along. I'll keep the window up in this particular case so that we can hear the resonance inside the car. Now, typically a wheel bearing noise will give you a row, 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 row noise, whereas a differential noise will be consistent row. Let's just have a listen. Hear that growling noise? Hang on there folks, going around the corner. Now typically if we're going to check for a wheel bearing we rock from side to side like this, okay? And generally you'll hear the noise change as the bearing is loaded up or unloaded. You'll hear that rabbit out noise come and go. In this particular case the noise is consistent which leads me to think that it might be within the final drive. Now it's not as bad as it was the other day. I've actually changed the oil in the transmission which includes the final drive oil as well and I put in some additive too. So I've got to do some more testing before I rule this one, but it's certainly quieter than it was the other day. I just wanted to get this nice and hot before I do any testing. We'll hang a U in, head back to the workshop. Now you can hear that noise a bit louder now, can't you? But we're getting this rah 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 noise happening, which is good because we can isolate it a bit better. I really don't want to call it until I've done further testing. So how do you test for a wheel bearing for instance? One of the basic testing methods for checking wheel bearing condition is to grab it top and bottom and move it in and out. In other words, this sort of motion backwards and forwards, okay? And in this case, eh, all feels good. I've put it in neutral so that I can rotate just this wheel by itself and have a listen to it when I spin it up. It's a little bit growly, isn't it? Okay, so it's a wheel bearing, is it? Well, remember, sound travels along a shaft. How can I identify that this is the noise? I'm gonna try an experiment that I haven't tried before that might help isolate the fault. To isolate sounds, previously we used to use things such as a screwdriver to the ear, and you could hear the sound travel along this shaft into your eardrum and it would magnify the sound. Other things that you could use would be a stethoscope, similar to what a doctor uses. You would stick that against the offending part and see if that was the most noisy thing. But look, in this particular case, as well as modern vehicles, we have all sorts of vibrations coming through and manufacturers use all sorts of things to try and eliminate those vibrations, including dual mass flywheels, including uh, active uh, engine mounts, etc all sorts of things to try and stop vibration coming through. So I'm gonna try and use something a little bit different today that may help. So don't laugh, this is my little idea. What I have here is a piezoelectric vibration sensor and it's on a little reed and it has a weight on the end and it vibrates backwards and forwards. And that in conjunction with my oscilloscope can tell me if there's any unusual vibration that we should be looking at. I'm gonna clip this onto the final drive assembly, take some readings with my oscilloscope and then clip it onto the wheel bearing area and take some readings and see if there's a larger difference between the two. And that should determine where the fault is. Well, it's a prototype. 
this is what I've set up at the moment and don't laugh okay um, I know that Pico put out a NHV sensor uh, but I don't have that sort of money so this is what I've hooked up and you can see I've got it onto the back plate here and I've also got a cable tied out the road so that we don't have any tanglement issues so that goes back to my oscilloscope let's have a look at what a what the readings are saying I'm going to run it at about 80 k's at the wheel bearing area then I'm going to shift my clip over to the diff area or the final drive assembly and see if there's any difference in frequency let's have a look at that all right I'm at the wheel bearing now and we'll just bring it up to about 80 k's an hour and see what sort of frequency range we're going to get out of this signal so up to 80 thanks right so it's a little hard to see the frequency counter there but uh what are we getting about five seven hundred something along those lines i guess uh, yeah, it goes up to 700 from what i can see 700 800 something along those lines let's clip it onto the final drive assembly now and see what it does i've now got it clipped onto the final drive assembly that way hopefully i can see a frequency change and that might give me an idea of where the actual noise is coming from so that'll be the next signal that we look at so you can see i'm getting 69 hertz and a consistent signal over here aren't we we'll just put it back on the wheel again to double check our work wow check out the difference hey look at the signal it's all over the place isn't it and we're looking at a frequency of about 600 i saw 700 there before but uh hell check out the difference excellent i think that's all the information we need what an excellent result we're looking back at the diff well, the final drive assembly about 60 70 hertz if i remember correctly we saw that nice sine wave didn't we whereas over at the wheel bearing we saw all sorts of mishmash happening and six to seven hundred hertz my goodness imagine the difference i feel confident now that i can go ahead with the repair with the wheel bearing replace the bearing and it should fix the problem got the hub off it's ready to be pressed off the bearings that is once i get the old bearings off i'll show you what they're like and confirm my diagnosis all right bearings are all pressed in new seals etc yes the old bearings were had it i'll pop this back on then i'll show you the old bearings here's the uh, cups and the bearings and if we have a look at the cups themselves you can see how brown they are probably don't have very good light on it but you can see um, there's even marks on them vertical marks which obviously is overheating and a lack of lubrication so yep diagnosis complete happy with that both of them are the same they're both browned off and the bearings are in the same sort of condition they're both brown so yeah been overheated probably never had um, grease replaced in it therefore created overheating and wearing it out ergo vis-a-vis -vis, the noise I'm now hooked up on the same position that I was before with the wheel bearing. Um, remember that was like mm, six, seven hundred hertz. It was quite mashy in the uh, signal as well. Very, very hashy and it wasn't consistent whatsoever. So let's start it up now, run it at 80 k's as we did before. See what the frequency and the waveform is like at 80 k's. Okay, that's about 80 k's. What's our frequency reading? uh 50 60 yeah 50 60 something along those lines so look i'm happy with that you're going to get some sort of external noise as well but have a look at the waveform it's a lot more consistent than what we saw before and the frequency range is a lot lower it's not that big horrible sound that we had before i guess the only way to check it out is on an official road test so let's do that next are we comfy i hope so hmm What's that I hear? It's the sound of silence. Excellent. Yeah, it's no longer that worry, worry, worry noise that we had before. We'll just take it out the road a bit further, see what we get. So that's at 80 k's now. I can't hear any noise whatsoever, apart from normal road noise. The tyres are down a little bit, but obviously you're going to get noise from that as well. It's only a little tiny car, but there's not that rarey, rarey, rarey sound that we had before. I should put out a soundtrack. What do you think? Miracle Max's diagnostic noises. Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. Um, wheel bearing noise. Wow, 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 wow. 
death. Yep, I'm happy with that, that's pretty good. Let's take it a bit further just to warm it up a bit more. Just keep in mind that I've only done one wheel bearing, the right hand front. Now, no doubt the left hand front is not healthy either. It's done the same amount of Ks, no doubt. I just wanted to determine that it wasn't the final drive assembly. That would be big bickies and not worth it with the price of this particular car. So, yep, just a wheel bearing, good news. Look, I'm really impressed with the results that I've got from this particular method of testing for wheel bearing noise or any sort of noise. I must admit it's not my forte, so to have something on my side is a good thing. So just using a basic cheap little oscilloscope, you've seen me use it before in previous videos, together with a piezoelectric vibration sensor, just clipped onto the appropriate item to figure out if you've got too much noise or not. Brilliant. This was about 27 bucks. This was about, I don't know, 12 bucks at the most, I think. I don't even think it was that much. Look, I'll put the link in the description below for you. This is a little bit different to the type of video that I normally offer. And it's been amazing just to see that little um, vibration sensor at work. So accurate for so little price. You don't have to pay a fortune for your tools. You just need to know how to use them. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like feel free to comment down below. Oi, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos, hey? Nah. All right, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later. Bye.